inshallah, we're going to go through some uh, basic ways in which you guys can hopefully be able to justify and rationalize Islam, to introduce Islam rationally to non-Muslim friends, Muslim friends that require it. And then we're going to quickly move on to questions and answers. And what we want you to do in that section uh, of the program is really to engage with us, inshallah. And when, when we're engaging, I want you to ask all the questions that you find difficult to, um, that you find quite difficult, especially in California, it's a liberal, very liberal state. You know, you can ask any question you want, and we'll give you the answers which we have found have the most battleground success, like the ones that we've tried in different contexts, and which we have found have worked the best. <laughs> Because da'wah is an important obligation for everyone, you know, everyone needs to make sure, especially in a country like this, that they are engaging with Muslims and non-Muslims, because frankly, we are at the mercy of a lot of forces that are not in our control, so everyone needs to be proactive in the community, everyone needs to be doing da'wah to their close friends and their families and their neighbours and their, you know, the Prophet Muhammad says, He says that, tell the people about me, and even if it's one ayah. So, بِفَهْمِهَا as well, which means you have to have the understanding of that ayah. So today is inshallah, we're giving you some battlegrounded, field tested, um, arguments which have had considerable success in different contexts and we're going to go through a method called the go rap method now it's a very straightforward method you might have heard it before put your hands up if you've heard it before if you've heard it you know so the go rap method is a is an acronym yeah each letter g o r a p it stands for a word and the idea is when you're approaching someone as a non-muslim or sometimes, unfortunately, even now, you know, if you're if you're approaching Muslims, it's a, it's just a way in which you can sequence your thoughts. What you start off by saying, you know, then what, then what, then what, then what. So Ali's gonna start off with the G and the O, and then I'm gonna do the R, and then he's gonna come back to the A and P. And we're, we're basically going to go through each of those things. If you need to take notes, please do so. You can use your phones, we won't take it as an event. If you want to write on a piece of paper. But do expect to be interrogated, okay? Because passive learning is always a, it's not a good way to uh, retain information. So Ali, inshallah, is going to start with, uh, with the first part. <laughs> Now, you can hear me, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, go rap. Uh, the G stands for God, proving God's existence. The O stands for His oneness. The R stands for revelation. A stands for and. Uh, what's coming after. And P stands for uh, prophet. Good. So, we're going to be, inshallah, going through it, but we're going to test you guys. So we will pick two people from the brother's side who we will bring up here. And will be tested, yeah? Okay, Allah says in the Quran, don't think that you just going to say I believe and not be tested. <coughs> uh, you're going to be tested today and always we get tested in different ways in our life. Okay, so Allah says in uh, 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 Quran chapter 52 verse 35, Is it that they are created by none, or are they themselves the creators? Or have they created the heavens and the earth? No, but they are sure of nothing. This statement here, no, but they are sure of nothing, is something that you will hear uh, when you're talking to atheists. So the first premise, how do we prove that God exists, yeah? So our premise is, is that everything that begins to exist has a cause, yeah? Does that make sense? Everything that begins to exist has a cause. So we live in a realm where there's cause and effect, yeah? This bottle of water would not drop unless I do this, yeah? That's cause and effect, yeah? I had to do this, yeah? So there you go. The universe began to exist, yeah? So when I'm speaking to my atheist friend, I would say David or Amy, what's a popular female name here? 
Susie. Susie, yeah? Okay, I assume the rest of you. Your teacher's name is Susie. I'm joking, I'm joking. It's one of my dead jokes. By the way, I, make, I try to make these jokes to make people laugh, but it doesn't work. Uh, but I do try. I'm, I'm improving, mate. But some people do laugh. Yeah, so basically, if we're speaking to Susie, we're speaking to, uh, in Britain, Amy, uh, Jonathan, David, whoever it may be, we say, look, my friend, yeah? My premise is that everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. You tell me if this is right or wrong or you want to add more into it, yeah? Either it came from nothing. <laughs> or it was created. Yeah? Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Yeah. Is there anything else we can add into this? Any other possibility? Yeah? Anything else, sisters? Not from nothing. No. Okay. okay, I want you guys to put yourself in an atheist mind yeah, and try to challenge it, yeah? Can something come from nothing? I'm telling you, can something come from nothing? It can't, yeah? Why? Because nothing, from nothing, nothing comes. What is nothing? What is the definition of nothing? Nothing is the absence of something. There is nothing there. Zero. Zilch. Yeah? So, in mathematics even, you never get zero plus zero equaling one, yeah? So we say there's some impossibility. Yeah, so you need to say to Susie, Susie, we say bye bye to nothing, yes? Nothing, goodbye, no more nothing, nothing is good, yeah? Now, the second option is, okay, Susie or uh, Donald, uh, you, know, you might be giving do down to Donald Trump, you never know, yeah? Yeah, you never know, this yeah, it can happen, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, anyways. Um, can it create itself? Can the universe create itself? Why not? Hmm? Can I exist and not exist? Sorry, sorry? Can I exist and not exist? Put your hands up, guys. It's going to be like, you know. Yeah, put your hands up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you should see. Okay. Yeah. Can I exist and not, not exist at the same time? Yes. So, for example, the example you can give is uh, that can my mother give birth to herself? She has to exist and not exist at the same time. It's an impossible, impossible. it's a paradox, yeah? So we say, okay, that's not possible, yeah? So I, I'm sure if they're logical, they'll say, okay, that makes sense. It has to exist and not exist at the same time. Not possible, okay, bye-bye. It cannot, it cannot create itself. Okay, the atheist might say, okay, hold on a second, sir. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always been there. It's infinite, it's, it's, the universe has always been there. What would you say then? As you can put your hands up. Yes. As to have like a start point? Why? Right. He's saying it's always been the infinite. It's, it's, it's always been the... Well, I mean, it can't just come from nothing. I mean, it has to have a, a start point, like a beginning. How do you know? Um, they, they don't know, actually. That's why Allah says in the Quran, that when you ask them, they say no, but we are, we are, we are not sure of nothing, which I'm going to come to. They, they, they would jump around and say, you know, oh, you know it never, it's always been there. So what, how we... How we uh, made it, make them understand is that we say, look, imagine if I had infinite amounts of biryanis, yeah, okay, biryanis, you like biryani, yeah, okay, yeah, um, yeah we, we didn't have biryanis, we had some, what, what did we have today? We had some um, anchovies, uh, anyways, imagine you have infinite amounts of uh, biryanis, yeah, if I eat two biryanis, how many biryanis do we have left? Infinite. Sorry? Infinite. No, I just ate two. Infinity minus two? It's a contradiction. So for example, what we're trying to say, imagine I added two more biryanis. Yeah? So infinite doesn't have a beginning and an end, yeah? yeah? So to take away from it and add to it is a contradiction. Infinite doesn't have no beginning and end. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So infinite does not exist in the real world. So we'll say to Susie, and we'll say to David and Donald, yeah? That infinite doesn't exist in the real world. Show me an example of infinite. I'll say to him, show me an example of infinite. Yeah? He can't, it doesn't exist in the real world. So we say, look, infinite does not exist in the real world. Because if you take away two, you can't say infinite minus two. It does not, it's a contradiction, do you get it? Or infinite plus two, it, does, it, it, it doesn't exist in the real world, yeah? So we'll say bye-bye to infinite, yeah? So there's not infinite. The argument was finite, sadly, yeah? Now they would come and say, okay, no problem, chance. Yeah? They'll say, uh, there's a chance. We'll say, can it come from nothing? Yeah, there's a chance. There's a chance with this. There's a chance with everything, yeah? So when they come with this argument, personally, these people are the hardest to talk to, yeah? Because to them, everything is a chance, yeah? I mean, I was speaking to one guy in the speaker's corner, and I said to him, is there a chance I'm a lamppost? He said, yes, yeah? He said, yeah, there's a chance that you might be a lamppost. 
So yeah, I don't know what else to say to them. Yeah. But then I go, sometimes you have to drop to their level in a way and say to them, okay, um, is there a chance? Um, is there a chance that my mom is a blue rhino and met my dad who's a, a red giraffe in Mars? You have to say the most crazy stuff you can, the, the most craziest, absurd stuff that you can, and say, is there a chance? Yeah, most likely they're going to say no. If they say yes, then just leave them. I mean, honest, just seriously, just say, look, I, I think it's for I mean, several ways. Because you can't win, because to them, everything's a chance. You know? He thinks everything, everything's possible, you know? I would say don't waste your time. But if you can give some crazy examples, which they themselves will think, okay, it's not possible, say, there you go. So what's the only option left? It's created, yeah? Simple as that, no one can deny this, yeah? So they have now accepted that a designer exists, yeah? They accepted a creator exists. Now here, they would come and say, oh, okay, okay, let's, they'll say to you, argument's sake, I accept, okay. No, 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 no. if they say to you, argument's sake, no, don't let them just go, yeah? Because now, because they know it makes sense, and they, they have to accept the creator exists, and they don't want to, they would come and say, oh, argument's sake. No, no, don't say, no, say, say, if you see an argument's sake, it shows that you're not certain. Let's go back to it. And you'll say, oh, no, no, I don't want to go back to it, yeah? Then say, okay, you've accepted now the creator exists, yeah? So when they ask you the question, who created the creator? You need to make sure that they are certain, yeah? That a creator exists. Yeah, don't move on from this point. Otherwise, they're going to say, okay, all right, all right, because he's going to feel like you've got one over him. And he's going to say, okay, but who created your creator? Yeah? Say, look, I'm not here to win an argument. I'm not here to say, okay, 1.2 point to me, 0 point to you. I'm here to uh, make you think. So now, when it comes to the question, if they say, okay, look, I genuinely accept that there's a creator, but I want to know who created the creator, how would you answer that? You put your hands up. Just tell them what they told you. What did they tell me? Okay, you can say that, but how? He's going to say, you, you, you said, uh, you, you can't use that, but how are you going to break it down? Because he's going to say, who created your creator? Uh, you can use the argument we said, everything that begins to exist. So our premise was everything that begins to exist, but we don't believe Allah began to exist, yeah? You can use that, it's a good point, but we would say, for example, we call it infinite regress, yeah? So if there is more than one God, then we, like Allah says in the Quran, that if there is more than one creator, they would have been conflict, they would have fought each other for power, yeah? And if there is more than one God, then we have to ask the question, which one is more powerful than the other? Because if there's more than two, then which, which one created the other? How could they both just exist simultaneously, do you get what I'm saying? So another example we can give is to this, that it doesn't work, is if I said I need permission to tip this water bottle over, but I need to ask Muhammad Hijab, yeah, so I go, Muhammad Hijab, do you give me permission to tip this bottle over? And he says, one second, Ali, I'm going to ask, what's your name? Muhammad. I'm going to ask Muhammad, number two, yeah? And Muhammad, number two, is going to ask somebody else. And if this goes on forever, would I ever get to tip the bottle? No. Never, because it's infinite regrets. He's asking him, is, do you get it? So if there was more than one creator, the universe would have not begun. Nothing would have happened. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So you can use that verse in the Quran as well. This is the way we prove God exists and why God is one, and there is not more than one. In a simple, and you can you can shape this up yourself as well, yeah? So look into different arguments, you can shape it up yourself. This is just the basic of the basics. And then we'll go to Revelation. <coughs> uh, okay, so at this point, hopefully, the person you're speaking to is at a stage where they accept the existence of one God. And this is a good argument. The cosmological argument has been used uh, in many contexts, and it has a few limitations. So it's a, it's a very strong argument. In terms of the oneness argument, as, as Ali said, you know, the verses of the Quran, for example, and I, wallahi, the more I research, the more I realize the Quran has all the answers. I know it's a very cliche thing to say, but it really does. The best arguments are the Quranic arguments. So for example, on oneness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anbiya, uh, Al He says, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَفَسَدَتَا If there were in them, or if there were more than one God, then the heavens and the earth would have been destroyed. فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ 
So what is this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if there was more than one ultimate authority, more than one will, then the heavens and the earth would have been destroyed. The reason for that is because if the commanding and guiding authority was more than one ultimate commanding and guiding authority, then which one would the rule of nature follow? For example, to put this in simple terms, if you have two drivers of a vehicle, someone's driving a car, but you have two cars, the two uh, drivers, where's the car going to go, you know? If you have two independent autonomous drivers, both of, both of them having the option to drive wherever they want to drive, which one is going to determine where the car goes? So, the car will misnavigate and in the same way the cosmic reality or the heavens and the earth would be destroyed because it requires one ultimate guiding authority. The other verse in Surah Al Mu'minun, which Baba Ali mentioned, I think is verse number ninety one, is chapter number twenty three. That they would have competed with one another in terms of power. They would have competed with one another in terms of power. So once again, it's impossible to have two almighty gods. That's impossible. You know why? Because the definition of all powerful is that you are more powerful than everything else. Then how can you have two of those things? Do you understand? If the definition is that you have ultimate will and command and power over everything else, then having more than one of those entities is an impossibility. Should we do a little test before we continue? No, we, have to, we have to. We have, we to, have to. to, yes. This is a must. Yeah. All right, so... Yeah, let's, let's pick some people. Now, this is where everybody looks away. Yeah, gentlemen, I'm not going to pick them. But actually, we're going to pick the ones that look away. So let's, let's, let's pick this brother. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Only two people. Yeah, yeah you, you and that brother. Yes. Come on. Yeah, you're just in front of us here, it's fine. Huh? Or we'll be here. Yeah, just, okay. just, yeah. Come here so yeah. the sisters can see you as well. Come here, there. Don't worry, then, you know. There's no one. Oh, you know, no. Here or there? Right there. So everyone can see them. Yeah, come here. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Yeah. You want to sit down? Can you sit down? Are you sure? Come. Okay, let me go. Okay, so basically, you, you, do you want to be. You, you be a Muslim, yeah? Okay, you are. You're going to pretend to be an atheist, yeah? So you're giving him the hard challenge already. Right? Yeah, I know you can do this, okay? So basically, he's, he, you need to prove to him that God exists, okay? So he's an atheist, you're going to say to him, look, hi, Mr. Muslim. Hello, hello. Yeah? Okay, I want to know. Do you want, do you want a mic? Let's do this. I'm going to hold it. Okay. You should give him my mic. No, 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 we've all spoken. Okay. Um, post, post him. Yeah, how do, how do you prove that God exists? How do you prove God exists? Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Universe. Universe meant to exist. I wonder what caused that. Good, good, this is good. You can use this, yeah? You should say, look. Say the mic dropped, there's a cause. Yeah, the mic dropped, it's because they're poor. Ali, you just power it in here. Now, now, yeah. <laughs> you might as well just do it for him. <laughs> okay, All right, come on. Give him the option. This is good. Now it's good, yeah? So you give him the option. What's the options? Yeah. The universe began to exist. Either it came from? Nothing. Okay, it created itself. It was created. It was created. Or it's infinite. Or there's a chance. Yeah, it's good as well. Yeah. Can it come from nothing? No. The universe can't come from nothing. Okay, so you say, nice no, 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 you say, you say, you say, yes, it can come from nothing. Okay, yes, it can come from nothing. So you're, you're spoon feeding them too much, man. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, prove to him you can't come from nothing. So basically, it's like if 
Ali here, he asks, uh, he asks Muhammad if I can hold, if I can hold this microphone. And then uh, Muhammad asks another brother in there, and then he asks another brother, and then another brother, and another brother. It's just going to go on forever. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good. You at, the, you at the right stage. That's the second argument. Don't forget that. That was very good. Yeah. That's the second stage. The first one is, can something come from nothing? Uh, and he said yes. Yeah. Say to him, zero plus zero can it equal one. Zero plus zero can it equal one? No. Uh, so you got him now. Yeah. So you're gonna say. So therefore, it cannot come from nothing. So therefore, it cannot come from nothing. Yeah. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick another person. And I'll miss each other. Another person to carry this argument on. Um, Someone, maybe someone of a different age group now. How old are you talking? Yeah, you're saying me. Yeah, come, come. No, not the young one. I mean, now we're okay. um, Come, Aki, one of you guys. Come. We're, we're going to come to you. Come on, brother. Pick, pick, pick someone. This brother here, look. Yes, the, the, the one with the curly hair. Come. <laughs> yes, Michelle. Okay, so we stop, we stop that nothing here. Yeah? So he's proven that he cannot come from nothing. Uh, the next argument is, you know, that, um, can it create itself? Yeah. Can it create itself? Right. So, can the universe create itself? Yes. All right, how can the universe create itself? I refuse to believe it. Here, I'm going to get it. Go on. So, yeah. if the, um, you know, if, if okay, let's let's use an example, right? If the universe can create itself, let's look, let's look at our world, right? Can your mother give birth to herself, right? Can she both exists to give birth to herself and then not exist so she could be birthed by herself. No, that's not gonna work. Good. Yeah, so, yes, I'm going to make one more, yeah, one more. One more, one more, so, 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 yes, good, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So good, it cannot come from nothing. Yeah, bring it, bring it close to this. Oh, yeah. So it cannot create itself because the mother can't give birth to herself. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's a creation paradox, right? Something can exist and not exist at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's infinite. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, well, it's, ask, ask him. You say, you say, maybe it can be infinite. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the universe always existed and it's infinite. Okay, so if it again, right? Like if I were to drop this mic right now, that wouldn't have just accidentally happened, or you know, you being here wasn't always here. So infinite doesn't exist in the real world. So, um, you know, if, if I if I had you know if I had to take a seat and I had infinite chairs for you to pick one and you sat one, but I still have infinite chairs, or would I have uh, one chair? But that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's good. That's good. It's good. You, when you're on the spot like that. Well, now let's get sisters involved as well. Yeah. Not, so, uh, not, we're going to give you the you, know, you, can, you can stay in, in your seats, inshallah, no problem. Uh, now let's go for the second part, the part of oneness. So I'm going to pretend to be someone who's agreed with your first premise that there could be a God. And now we're going to tease the question, why cannot be, just why does it have to be one God? Who okay. created God? No, we don't know anything. No, Infinite regress. We do oneness now. <coughs> No, 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 more than one God now, we're a different question. So now, let's see. If I'm someone who's saying, why does it have to be one God? Yeah? Who wants to? I'm going to give you the option before I pick anyone. <coughs> who wants to? Um, Let's go one and... Uh, no, no, he's the one who can control everything. Because he's the only one. If there's two, they can't control. Okay, why? Why? You're right, okay. Pretend I'm an atheist now, I'm going to be a bit more, I need to, a bit more antagonistic. Why? Because he's the power. Okay, why does it have to be just one? Why not two? Or three? Uh, okay. So, we have uh, the, the husband and the wife in the house. <laughs> 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 MashaAllah, you've got good examples. <laughs> so, in the, uh, the man, he's gonna, he has to control the house. They both of them go the same. Are you going to bring that to the feminist talk? Yeah. The other part is not going to work. You know, that's so it's only one can do that. 
But okay, yeah, right. So what was the example that another example that maybe is good? Tell tell us. So a little bit the atheist now, um, the polytheist now, yeah. So if there are more than one God, yes. they, are, they are having to be corrupted because who's going to be the boss now? Okay. Corrupted. Right, I see what you mean. But why can't there be two all-powerful agents? Uh, so who is in charge? Mm. If they have different opinions, who's going to be in charge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah? This is the argument. Well done, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Fine. We're going to move on to the next part of the uh, discussion which is about revelation. So the question now is, okay, say they believe in God, because a lot of people in America, in England we have a lot of atheists. I'm not sure how it is in California, but in America generally, I think there's a higher proportion of people that believe in God than there is in, uh, in, in, in England. So you get them to the point where they believe in God. The secondary question now is, what about Rasulullah wasallam? What makes your prophet true and all and so on. So we start with the Quran. I'm just going to give you three or four arguments which I think have been very effective and will act as a way in which you can convince someone that he was a true prophet. And then Ali will give us some more information about his life and about his character. Okay? But I'm going to start with the Quran itself, right? So there are certain things we would argue about the Quran which doesn't exist in other scriptures. So for example, the fact Obviously, that is unimitable, that you can't copy it. It's something which there's a challenge. You know, bring your witnesses from other than God, make one chapter like it, and then bring your witnesses from other than God if you're truthful. But also the fact that it was preserved, yes? We have certainly sent down the the dhikr, the remembrance of the Quran, and we will certainly preserve it. You know, that also is there's no contradictions in the Quran. You know, and if it was from other than God, they would have seen in it many contradictions. So these are prerequisite things that you expect from Revelation. The second thing is, now the arguments I put forward are as follows. Number one, and I'm going to test you on this, inshallah, try and be as active in learning as possible, is the linguistic miracle of the Quran. Yes? The language of the Qur'an, by the testimonial of those individuals that lived with the Prophet Muhammad even the detractors, even the ones who did not accept his message, they realized that it was completely irregular in terms of its descoping of all of that which came before it in terms of the Arabic language. So it's something in terms of text which is unmatched by the admission of the early Arabs. And what's the evidence of that? on a demographic or sociological level, the evidence of that is its effect on, on Arab society and on the world. How individuals receive this book, and by the way, it's not the only claim at that particular time to prophethood and to revelation. There were other claims like Musaylam al kadhab and other people who pretended to be prophets, and they had so-called revelations, but it never resonated with people as a result of its lack of eloquence, the Arabs, they saw through it, the specialists knew that this was something which was not actually anything amazing in that way. So that's the first thing, the linguistic thing. The second thing is the structural coherence of the Qur'an. So the Qur'an, as you guys know, was revealed over 23 years. And in those 23 years, the Qur'an came down piecemeal, meaning bit by bit. It didn't come down all in one go. But despite the fact that it came down piecemeal, and it was a circumstantial revelation, so someone would come and ask the Prophet a question, and he would sometimes answer in the form of revelation in the Quran. So he had. He was going to respond. Yet, when it comes together in chronological format, there's an incredible knitted togetherness of the Quranic discourse. Let me give you some live examples. There's 114 surahs of the Quran. Inextricably linked in terms of themes and the actual words that are used, the lexis. So in other words, 
And this is something you can count and quantify. It's not something we're just saying is you know, something which is a haphazard experiment. And by the way, this has been quantified and it has been studied on a, on a scholarly <laughs> level. Even in English, like Raymond Farron and Neil Robinson and Corey Pilsen. Many people have read about this. It's something which is academically now studied, yeah? In the English-speaking world, let alone the Arabic-speaking world, which there's lots of things on that as well if you want. I can give you references. But let me give you a live example. So there's 114 chapters of the Quran. So the bottom in the front, see, give me two numbers that are from 1 to 114 that are next to each other. 1, 1, 1? No, like 1 and 2, 2, 3, like this. Oh, 4, 4 and 7. Oh, sorry, 4 and 5, 4 and 5. 4 and 5, okay? So Surah Al-Nisa is chapter 4, and 5 is Surah Al-Ma'idah, yeah? If you look at how Surah Al-Nisa began, and first of all, how Surah Al-Imran, it ended. Let's look at that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends Surah Al-Imran with a discussion, in Allah la yudhi'a amal amal minkum min dhakarin aw untha ba'dukum min ba'd. That Allah does not let to waste any good deed of any of you, man or woman, and both of you are from each other, yeah? Ba'dukum min ba'd. Dhakar untha. Remember these words, yeah? Surah Al-Nisa. Then what? Is there a connection between Nisa and Unsa? Yes. Is there a connection between Ba'dukun and Ba'd in the end? And Ja'ala Minha Zawjaha? Yes. It's the same language being used at the beginning of Surah uh, Nisa and the end of Surah Al-Amran. But they are different revelations, different times. You'll even find just what I find really interesting about Surah Al-Amran, it ends with Dua. And it begins with Dua. It, 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 surah Al-Amran, I'm going back now a little bit, but I'll come forward to Surah Al-Ma'idah uh, because you asked about it. It, end, it starts with, you know, and then it ends as dua. And it starts with dua, the first page of Surah Al Amran. And the last couple of pages of Surah Al Amran, in the Sama'ana and Munadi, Munadi the Iman. And then all of the, all of the after ayahs are all dua. Mentioning what? Women and men, just like Al Amran. How does Surah Al Nisa end? It talks about how this is uh, the very last ayah of Surah Al Nisa after talking about Jesus and all of those things. It talks about one mas'ala in Miraf. And the mas'ala involves men and women. So it ends the way it began. And Mirath is a kind of contract. It's a kind of contract. It's part of transactions. How does Surah Al-Ma'idah begin? Ya amanu Fulfill your contracts. So it's too intricately connected. The beginnings of the surahs, the ends of the surahs, all of them are connected, but they're not revealed at the same time. So how could it be that this man who was being asked questions randomly, now he's been able to answer them haphazardly, but at the same time, he's allowed the Quran to have this incredibly tight knitted togetherness, lexical knitted togetherness. It's something which, frankly, boggles the mind. And so much so that they have started researching into it they know some non-Muslims have researched it. Like, you know, how did they, you know, they, they're confused about it. Because it's a strong argument for the coherence of the Qur'an and the legitimacy of the Qur'an as a text from Allah. And you know this argument, by the way, there's some mathematical things. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the mathematical, so-called mathematical miracles, like number 19 and those things. I keep away from that because it's been refuted, yeah? 
And there's lots of it which is muddied the waters and I don't like it, to be honest with you. Because I've checked some of them and a lot of them are fake, you know, to be honest with you. I have to be honest with you, right? But some of them are not fake and I've checked some of them, right? I'll give you an example of this. And this links to structure as well. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Inna, inna mathala Isa عند, عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيه. That Jesus is like The word Adam is mentioned seven times up until this Surah and Ayah. And the word Isa is mentioned also seven times. Because both of them, Allah is saying, they like each other, isn't it? But then, if you read the whole Quran, both of them are mentioned 25 times. Adam is mentioned 25 times, and Isa is mentioned 25 times. So, even in terms of wording, it's very delicate. The Quran is not like something which is haphazard or something like that. No, this is delicate. Everything is delicate. The wording, everything, it's like it could not it had to be crafted by someone. It could not have been done something like haphazard. How could someone know the future in that way? And linking on to how could someone know the future of that way? So we said we talked about the linguistic and the structural coherence of the Quran, and with that we talked a little bit about the mathematical stuff. Number three, we can talk about the predictions, and this is a very powerful, one of the most successful things <coughs> I've used. And because it's a straightforward <laughs> argument, Allah, He makes predictions about the future. That the Romans have been defeated in a nearby low land, you know, and after they lost, they will come to return the victory in a nearby low land. Then that day, the Muslims will rejoice, and it will happen in three to nine years. And he's so many variables, very delicate, very, you know. And so the question is, how can so and this materialized, by the way, this actually happened the way it did. If someone says something's going to happen in the future, and it doesn't happen. This is an indication that they're a liar. If I say, oh, they don't know, either lack of knowledge, or, or for, it can falsify something. If I say this is going to happen, you know, I'm re receiving information from the all-knowing, and seven days from now, X is going to happen. It will destroy my reputation. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they had something, they said in 1977, yeah, they said it's going to be the end of the world. You know, so when this 1977 came, and the, you know, it's obviously, there was 1978 and 1979, and it wasn't the end of the world. They call it the Great Depression, because it didn't materialize, it didn't happen, and it, it shook their faith, it made them feel like this is not true religion or something. They believe in continual revelation. The point is, this is one of many prophecies in Islam. So many prophecies in Islam. Like, for example, one of the interesting ones, is the Prophet's hadith, where it says, That the, I have seen the earth in front of me, and I saw this eastern parts and western parts, and my nation, it will, cut, it will possess those areas of the world. The Islamic expansion was eastward and westward. It wasn't north and south. Mashariqaha wa maghribaha, east and west. And not only was it east and west, but the Prophet specified which countries are going to be overtaken. He talked about Yemen in the Hadith. He talked about Syria in the Hadith. He talked about Egypt in the Hadith. He talked about even a Sindh wal Hind, by the way, which is Pakistan. He says Muslims will fight the Turks. And we know that happened, and Turks became Muslim. They converted to Islam, as we know. He says that the Muslims will enter Constantinople, and Constantinople, which is Istanbul now. Yeah? There's so many things that he, how could he predict all of that? You know, the, the, brace, the brace, bracelets of Qisra, he said that it, uh, you know, the Roman Empire will expire. The Muslims will go into the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, and so on. So, these are like quick things you can just narrate to people. I made a video about it. It's called The Prophecies in Islam. You can check it, inshallah. It's, it, this is just a short hand, yani, of, the, um, of some of the things. But you can mention so many things about this, uh, inshallah. So, just to keep it very simple, the language, the structure, and the prophecies. And 
in that prophecy section, you can talk about some other interesting historical nuances. The fact that, for example, the Quran calls, it calls um, Joseph's master in Egypt, or, his, or the monarch at that time, it calls him king. The king. And the Bible calls him Pharaoh. And we know at that time, the word Pharaoh wasn't used. And how do we know that? Through the Rosetta Stone. It was discovered with the Rosetta Stone. And that happened in what, the 16th or 17th century or something like that. The hieroglyphic language was the encoded language. It, no one could have known that information at the time. And there's lots of information and lots of things that are additional to that. Things that the Prophet knew about ancient Egypt, which could not have been unearthed except through the Rosetta Stone, because it was a dead language. And so that's one of the examples. But there are so many other examples. And so those three things, you can, you can propagate them, you can, you can use them if you're just speaking to people. Obviously, if you have more time with them, you can give them better examples. Um, and give them, the more they reject, the more you can give them examples. And then at some points, they, might, they, might, they may feel like, you know, this is too much information, or this, these are too many evidences. Because at the end of the day, you've got to think of it from a probabilistic perspective. All of these things, what are the chances that all of this could have happened? You know, it's a very slim chance, and they recognize that deep in their fitrah, in their nature, they realize that, frankly, this is a strong uh, uh, epistemic case. So with that, I'll leave you to the last bit. Inshallah, we'll open it for questions, inshallah. This is very short. Uh, so just, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, you might have yeah. So basically, this is going to be very short, so play questions, inshallah. Uh, so basically, this is where we uh, to prove the Prophet Sallallahu why he is a true Prophet, yeah? Uh, so basically, we have three um, question, uh, questions that we ask, or three options that we give to our friends. Uh, so basically, what we say is, uh, either the Prophet Sallallahu was truthful, he was a liar, or he was deluded. There's no other option, yeah? Just like we gave the options by proving God's existence. It came from nothing, the infinite, created itself, was created. So, let's start with lying. So we ask our friends, why does somebody lie? Why does somebody lie? Let me ask you guys. Why does somebody lie? To defend themselves. To, de to defend themselves. <coughs> to escape. Escape from, escape from any threat or something. Or any yeah, escape threat. from threat. But mainly the main uh, options is that for uh, to gain something. Yeah? Uh, they would lie to gain something, uh, be it popularity, be it money, whatever it may be. Yeah? That's, that's why somebody would lie. Yeah? And if somebody is given those possessions, they will stop lying, yeah? Okay, so if somebody is lying to uh, have to, to be to have a high status, um, uh, to, to have money, wealth, etc., whatever it may be, once they have got that, they will stop lying, yeah? Hopefully, if they're greedy, they will carry, carry on lying. So the Prophet said, look, the Quraysh came to him and said, look, stop preaching what you're preaching, yeah? Stop preaching Tawheed, stop calling to this one God that you keep talking about, yeah? We will give you a woman, you want a woman, we'll give you red camels. Red camels were like Ferraris back in the day, yeah? So don't belittle them. They were like Ferraris, yeah? You know, people like, like red camels. And uh, they said, we'll give you status, we'll give you whatever you like, yeah? If somebody is lying, what would they say? Yes, thank you. That's all I need, thank you very much. Okay, I'm stopping now. You do what you like, bye bye, yeah? The Prophet said, um, it might be vice versa, give me the moon in my left or the sun on my right or vice versa, I'm not going to stop preaching while I'm preaching, yeah? Does that sound like a liar to you? No, because he was persecuted. Not only that, they didn't just say, okay, take this. No, they, they persecuted him, yeah? They killed his companions, and he, and he uh, went through a lot. And I think in the Surah uh, Ahzab, what's it for Toba? Um, huh? Alam Far, sorry, Alam Far, verse 30, even uh, if I'm not mistaken, talks about this. That you know they conspired to kill the Prophet Sallam and he, out of Allah's permission, he escaped. You know, and we know from many verses how they were persecuting uh, the Muslims. So you can see that if he was a liar, he would have accepted and say, bye bye, yeah? So, is he a liar? No. Okay, then they will say, oh, maybe he was deluded. Maybe it was crazy, I would be like, yeah? So we say, okay, when his son died, what happened? What happened? Sorry. The moon, the moon eclipse, yeah? yeah? So the companions ran to him and said, look, your son died, the moon eclipse, yeah? If somebody is deluded, if somebody is crazy, they'll think, yeah, okay, this is great. Yes, see, I'm a prophet, I told you, yeah? What did the Prophet say? He said, no, the moon doesn't eclipse for nobody's death. 
Does that sound like a deluded man? No. Yeah? So he cannot be deluded, he's not a liar. He has to be truthful. No other option, yeah? And how is he truthful? Because he said to the Quraysh, and this is where, yani, the pinnacle of kufr, disbelief. He said, if I said to you, behind this mountain there is an army coming to kill us, would you believe me? They said, we know you to be the truthful. How could we deny you? He's saying, I'm telling you I'm the messenger of Allah, but you deny me. Look at the level of disbelief. We accept it if you, we look. If I said there's an army coming behind this building, would you accept, uh, behind this mountain? Would you accept it? Yes. Can you imagine? Look, look, they accepted it. Yes, we know you to be the truthful. They're saying it with their own mouth. And then he goes, I'm telling you on the message of Allah. They go, no, we deny it from you. It's mad, it's crazy. You know? Sometimes it makes you understand why you know, some people deserve help by it. It's absolutely crazy. You're with your own mouth. Your tongue is testifying. Yes, you are truthful, but no, we reject you. So, this is how we prove that the Prophet is truthful. Simple. Yeah? You can use this and shape up however you like. Let's open to Q&A, inshallah. Whatever questions you ha have, you want to ask, uh, anything, yeah? Okay. So brothers, you might be like, you know, you want to get married to a sister and they're not letting you in the family <coughs> and you're crying, you're upset, you know. It might be the other way around, whatever it may be. It might be something you're going personal in your life. You might have doubts. Please feel free. We're here to help you, inshallah, yeah? Whatever it may be, ask us, inshallah. So we'll open to questions. So I have, like, a few questions. Sure. Can I just ask them all? Or? No, just one at a time. We're trying to get everyone. We're trying to come back to you, though, Charlotte. Yeah. Um, let me see which ones. Okay, I'll start with the the Big Bang Theory. Yes. Right. So the, the theory is that the universe, you know, spontaneously, you know, time started at a certain point. Mm -hmm. Before that, the, you, you know, you don't know what was there or whatever. Time started at a point in time. And that's how the universe started. It just started, yeah. right? So, so that's like the scientific argument that they that they make, right? So, yeah. why do you have to prove that there was something before or not? You know, this is the theory. So, yeah. what do you say? That we, how we, I would say, person, how we covered it from cause and effect. Our premise is this: the way you dismantle that is you ex make them accept this premise. Everything that begins to exist requires a cause. If they say no, you have to say to them, okay, you need to prove to me how not, yeah? Because we're saying everything that comes to in, into existence requires a cause. If you're denying that, tell me how. What is your evidence? If you're not here, say what? And the argument we use is, can something come from nothing? Before time started, there was nothing. So can nothing make something? Can it? No. Finished. It's simple as that. Simple. You can't use that argument. It's finished because you're just saying it just happened. What do you mean it just happened? And is that it? Okay, it just happened. You know, it wouldn't. It, it doesn't make sense. You know, if 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 I don't know if if you went to this guy's car and uh, it's broken and he said to you, "What happened?" Say it just happened. You'll get angry with you. you say, "What do you mean?" Say it just happened. Did, it, it, did somebody hit my car? No, no, nobody hit your car. Nobody touched it. It just happened. He's going to get angry. You say, how do you want to say? Uh, we're not getting angry, but you think if we yourself in our shoes, we're not even talking about a car here. Yeah? Uh, so that's how I would first answer. Yeah? Yeah. As Muslims, how much of our beliefs and such have to be proved or backed by evidence and logic? And how much do we have to leave up to faith? For instance, there's a uh, word like destiny, free destiny, you have to leave up to faith. Yes. Etc. So how much can be proved by human intelligence and how much you have to leave up for faith? Mm. I, I will just touch upon it, I'm going to elaborate on it as well, is that, you know, Allah SWT tells us to use our aqal. So, you know, when we're pondering upon Allah SWT's ayah, yeah, revelation, be it, be it revelation, be it physical things that you see around you, um, you know, and there's a verse, which is the verse you were saying yesterday about the constellation of the night and day. <coughs> There's a powerful verse from the Quran that I tell you to do this. But there's a fine line. You see, we don't go to two extremes. Yeah? There is the, there's one extreme which says, uh, some people believe in, that you just have faith, close your eyes, yes, yes, I believe. This is not Islam. Yeah? It's not dead. Uh, we, we can logically understand things and we can ask this question. Then there's the other extreme where so, some people go to is, everything requires an answer. Everything. Then Prophet, if everything that you need to know, everything that Allah knows you know, I would be like, what's the difference between you and the Creator, if you need to know about everything, yeah? Where does Tawakkul come into it? If you need to know everything, rationally everything needs to be explained, then how does Tawakkul come into it, yeah? 
So for example, the matter of Qadr, yeah? We know Allah exists, yeah? We know the Quran is from Allah. We know the Prophet is his final messenger, yeah? Okay, now I know that. And there's a lot of few things that I would want to know as well. But there's matters from the unseen, so Qadr is one, yeah? And this is, I can maybe kill, not kill anybody, like two birds with one stone. We don't even want to kill birds, I'm just, it's a phrase that's used. For example, if Allah knows everything, then why are we here? Yeah? If Allah knows, I'm, yeah, a lot of people ask this question, yeah? There is no answer to this. It's as simple as that. But, maybe I can make you understand in a different way. Who's, who's, who's a billionaire in this country? Who's somebody that you guys know as a billionaire? Oh, an enemy? Yeah, like a rich person that people look up to. Trump. No, not uh, besides Trump. Mark Cuban. Huh? Mark Cuban. Mark Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, yeah? Let's to Bill Gates. You go to Bill Gates. Yeah, you, you go to Bill Gates, and uh, you, Bill Gates says to you, I want you to go to, uh, here they don't say city, they say downtown, yeah? You go to downtown, and they say to you, go to downtown uh, Sa San Diego? San Diego? Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go to San Diego and sell banana skins. Would you do it? Would you do it? If, if Bill Gates says to you, go to Downtown, San Diego, and sell banana skins. Would you do it? No. Why not? One second. He's a billionaire. The guy, he's, he's, he's rich. He's telling you, I want you to go and sell banana skins. Are you not going to think to yourself, this guy's rich. He's been in the business for so long. If he's saying it, maybe he knows something I don't. Would you not think like that for a second? Yeah. You would have been. Yeah, you would think of <laughs> yeah, it. You know very well, if Bill gets in front of you, you're not going to say no. You're going to say, okay, yeah. Yeah? So now, what are you doing there? You're not understanding what it's asking you to do, and it sounds si silly, but you're having trust in Him. Why? Because of who He is. And what about Allah? What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can you not, Allah, there's a lot of things that's explained. In this matter, can you not have to walk with Him? Can you not say to him, okay, on the day of judgment, I'm going to find out? Isn't that the best thing to do? You have two options. Either you're going to say, look, I don't believe, I'm going to leave the fold of Islam, or number two, I'm going to have my trust in my Lord. He knows what I don't know. He's the all-knowing. Yeah? Isn't that the better thing to do? Imagine you're going to die as a disbeliever and there was an explanation to it and somebody had the same concerns as you but believed. Two of you on the day of judgment in front of Allah. Allah explains to both of you. And one goes, oh, okay, it makes sense now. But it came at a cost. Do you get it? And this happened to me personally. I was, uh, I don't know if you saw my story when I got, uh, about Mocha. You know Mocha? You know coffee, Mocha? Did they said it here. Yeah, coffee mocha, yeah? I'll tell you my little story, yeah, just quickly. Is I went to this coffee machine in London, yeah, because I do Uber three, 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 four, three days a week, yeah? So I get tired and I drink these strong coffees, yeah, to stay awake. And I went to the machine and I pressed, I thought, I always get latte. I said, let me try mocha. So I pressed mocha. I pressed the machine, uh, mocha. We have Costa. Do you have Costa here? Costa is, uh, is at uh, Starbucks, yeah? So they have these machines. So I pressed mocha. And it says there, okay, uh, we're preparing a drink, uh, hot milk, uh, coffee, and then it was hot chocolate. So I thought, oh, what the hell is going on? I don't want hot chocolate. And I thought, this, you know, this machine is broken. And there's three machines next to it. So I got it and I threw it in the bin. Yeah, I said, I got the second machine. And I put mocha again. And then it's pouring hot, hot milk, coffee, uh, very tasty, hot chocolate. I said, what's going on? I don't want hot chocolate. Yeah, and this one, I put this one in the bin as well. I went to the third machine. I pressed mocha again. Same thing. So the owner is getting angry now. He's saying, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean what I'm doing? I'm ordering uh, a coffee, he's giving me hot chocolate. So he's getting angry at me. I'm saying, what do you want to do? Then he sends his two employees, they come to me, yeah? I go, brother, look. Yeah, I'm saying, look, look at me, yeah? I say, look, I'm pressing mocha, I press mocha. Same thing, I say, look, look. Hot chocolate, I said, you see? You see hot chocolate? Am I to blame? And they, they don't know, they say, no, you're, you're right. I said, forget mocha, I ordered latte, I took my latte, I paid for that, and I left. One week later, I found out how mocha is made. <laughs> There's hot chocolate. Yeah? I feel stupid. Mm -hmm. I went there, I paid for the free mochas, I apologized to the guy, yeah? I felt like going and kissing the machine, but I didn't. But the thing is what? My ignorance of not knowing something led, led to what? Blaming everyone. I blame the machine, I blame the employees, I blame the boss, I blame everybody. But who's the idiot? Me. It's because of my lack of knowledge. Do you get it? It's the same with tawakkul. Just because you do not know something, doesn't mean there's no wisdom behind it. Any 
Any questions from sisters? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it, yeah? Okay, first question and second one. Uh, yeah, second one. They have, they have one? So two questions. Number one, how do we explain to non-Muslims the right sects in Islam, like Shia, Sunnism, etc. And number two, uh, <laughs> can we say to an atheist that you've got nothing to lose, like that's the way. With the sects thing, I mean, there is nothing in the Quran. You'll never find any verse in the Quran which says uh, that you have to name yourself anything other than a Muslim. Yeah, this is a molten ijma. There's no, there's no doubt about that. No one can say, even the, the term Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah is not in the, it's not a Quranic phrase and it's not a phrase of the Prophet in that construction. He says Al Jama'ah, but Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah is not something that I know the Prophet said. However, when we say Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, what do we actually mean? We mean Ahlu Sunnat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa Jama'at al Sahaba. Yeah, that's what we mean. We mean the, the way of the Prophet and the Jama'ah, meaning the Jama'ah of the companions. And so, when we're saying we believe in the Prophet and we believe in the companions, that's if someone doesn't know where we stand in relation to the Sahaba. That's very particular. But there's even with that, there's no blame on you if you don't want to say, you know, I'm Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But there's no blame on you, obviously, if you say that you're from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. <coughs> and there's no blame on you if, like, remember Dhabi, he used to. He used to mention al qab he used to say, for example, kada wa kada as salafi He used to mention those uh, phrases, Hanafi, there's no problem with using it. If you want to, you, you know, use those terms, but you can't say that that is something which is, for example, fund. You cannot, you cannot put that argument, it's very difficult to put this argument, because there's no, there's no injunction at all from the Qur'an. For something to have that status, it has to have some backing from the Quran and Sunnah. You know, you can't say it if you don't say it, because a farida is something if you don't do it, you are Which means if you don't do it, then you are punished for its leaving, for leaving it. So if someone says to you, well, you're punished if you don't call yourself salafi. What is the evidence for this? Because you have to find something in the, in the hadith, in the Quran, to say that Allah. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. And even people of great eminence like Ntaymiyyah, yeah, he never called himself Salafi. Ibn Taymiyyah, I, I, I haven't read, I haven't read Istikra of all of his books. I don't know anyone in the world, maybe someone in the world, but definitely very difficult to find someone who's read all of his books. But it's not common that he calls himself a Salafi. So therefore, for someone to force you to call yourself in that way, is you, you don't need to do that, yeah. And the Quran says, "Who is the man who is Muslim?" And also, it says, "Man ahsanu qawla min man da'a Allahi wa amala salihah wa qala inna li min al-Muslimin." The Surah Al-Fusilat. That who is better in speech than one who you know calls to Allah and so on and says and does good deeds and says, "I am I am from one of the Muslims." So the phraseology in the Quran is that, but we call ourselves Muslim. Uh, however. We do have to differentiate ourselves from those individuals, for example, like that do uh, that attack the Sahaba, because the Quran says, "Wain amanu, wain amanu bimithlima amen tum bihi fakhirtelo." If they believe in what you guys believe in, then they are guided. Who's you guys? The Sahaba, because not ma amen tabihi, it's ma amen tum bihi. So who could it be possibly talking to? It's the primary audience, which is the Sahaba. And the verses in Surah Al-Tawbah 
you know, and Surah Al-Fatiha, which does taraddi on, uh, which means gives, uh, says that Allah is happy with them, and He is happy with the Sahaba, the ones who, the Muhajireen and the Ansar and so on. So, that's how we would clarify things, inshallah. And the Prophet told us that the Hadith of Iftiraq, he told us that the, the Muslim Ummah would be broken into different uh, sects. And they asked him, which is the right one? He says, Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi, wa I'm upon and my companions are upon. But he didn't say, call yourself this or call yourself that. He did say, Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. He did say this. But how that's understood shouldn't be the monopoly of any one group of scholars. So I would, I would just say, yes, it's true. Almost everything out there, because it's used as an argument against Islam. How comes Islam is true when there's so many sects? Ev almost everything is controversial. That's a fact. Even mathematics is controversial. What's zero divided by zero? No, no, uh, there's three answers. You know that? There's a different difference of opinion, actually. You know? Some say it's one. Have you heard this? Yeah, and some say it's infinity as well. And some say it's zero. I mean, and some say, so even the mathematics has ikhtilaf. <laughs> Don't tell me now that, you know. So the point is, even Gogol, who wrote something called the incompleteness theorem, by the way, it's very, it shook mathematics up uh, in, the, in, in the early 1900s. That's something else. The point is, just because something is controversial doesn't mean it's false. So explain to them that these are the options, but this is the, the one that I'm going with, yeah? And this is the evidence for it. Number one. Number two is, uh, you were asking about, what was the second question, sorry? Um, the second question was, what was it? What was the second? It's okay. It's okay. You are dying anyway. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Oh, 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 yeah, the Pascal. Okay, right. So, yeah, that's what the Quran says. The Quran says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ كَفَرْتُمْ بِهِ Imagine if this was from Allah and you made to kufr of it. Man adallu man min man huwa fi shikhaq al-ba'id. Is it shikhaq? Dalal. Dalal al-ba'id. Yeah? Who is the one who is further than, the one who is, yani, is, is, is lost in this way? But the, the shahid is that, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ كَفَرْتُمْ بِهِ Yeah, if it was from God and then you left it. So it's making them think, even from their perspective, what, what have you got to lose kind of thing. Yeah, so you can use that, inshallah. Maybe one more, one more, no? I don't, you know, just, I don't, can, we yeah. not, can we not say that like, we are, you, know, you, you don't need to na label yourself, but you know, because somebody might come and say, okay, there's so many different groups, and this person wasn't this, like, how do you distinguish? Because you say, okay, you're a Muslim, you say you're a Sunni. But then there's this like, for, can we not say well, people go for, follow the Quran, the Sunnah, and the way of Salah? Because yeah. um, this can be asked, because think about this, it's a valid question. Because they can say, everyone claims they're Sunni. Everyone claims they're Ahlul Sunnah, Yeah, you can definitely say this. So, yeah. so, uh, you, can, why not? you can say if you want to say that. There's no, there's, you should say that. If you say, I, I, I follow the way of the Sahaba, absolutely. Yeah. No, there's yeah. no problem, but it's not, but well, the point is, if you don't call yourself a Salafi or a Hanafi or whatever, no one can say that you're going to be punished for this. Oh no, 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 yeah, that's the question. Yeah. 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 You are in one of the conditions. Either you are a da'i of Allah or either you are being madaw. You know what madaw? Yeah, you're being called. You're being called. Oh, okay. So either you're being invited or you're being invited. Mm. Yes. So if the ummah will become inviter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah. he will never be in madaw. I like that. Shazakallah, that's a very good point here. So he said that, you know, either in this society you're going to be a caller or you're going to be called. And it's true, right? It's, you're either going to be a shepherd or you're going to be a sheep. You're either going to so make the argument... Either you're in Dawah or you're receiving in Dawah. You're either going to make the argument or it's going to be made against you. So make sure, guys, that you know, you make, you, you get your arguments straight and you become very, inshallah, active in what you do. Yeah? Thank you for that, Reminder. Yeah, that's it. Are we going to finish now? Yeah, it's your message. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We want to thank our speakers for coming all the way from the UK.
on jet lag and God knows what's going on with them. Anyway, um, so they have something called Salam Initiative, um, which is basically its main focus is to deconstruct the false narratives against Islam, feminism, liberalism, all the isms and schisms, or different, you know, different ideologies out there. Um, so, uh, you know, just as a matter of like honoring our guests, if it's possible, if you guys want to help out to the box on the table, if you guys want to help out, whoever you can help out with, yeah, or you can do it online. <laughs> or you can do it online, salam.uk.org. Salam.org, you can, yeah. But we prefer you, you help here, because I know sometimes you delay, like, you don't do it later on. Also, um, I've got to debate. I've got to mention. Sorry. Yeah. Are you going to mention it? Go. Yeah. No, no. Go ahead. You can mention it. No, I mention all your stuff. You can mention it. All right. So I've got a debate on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, with um, an atheist. His name is Eddie Tabash. And he's a famous atheist. The, the, here's the um, what do you call it? The flyer. You know. Anyway, um, the debate is going to be. The debate is going to be on Wednesday. You see Davis. Does God exist? Yeah. So we're going to chat like, if as many of you guys can come as possible, that would be a great opportunity for you to just be in the crowd because there's going to be question and answers. There's going to be maybe interaction between you and non-Muslims. You can practice some of your arguments. You know, and seriously, you can, you know, you can do that. But also, we need support as well because frankly, you know, we've realized from debating that if, if there's a strong atheist presence and there's not enough Muslims, then that can make it seem like what he's saying makes sense. Even though he's going to say, you know, God came, you know, God is evil or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, so make sure you guys are there so we can, you know, create balance in the audience, inshallah. That's UC Davis, 6 o'clock on Wednesday, the 10th of April, inshallah. Okay, uh, just quickly, so inshallah, tomorrow we have another event, Salam, and then day after we have a hike with them for the boys, inshallah. Um, so the event, Salam, it will be from 3 to 7 p.m., inshallah, Salam, Salam Center. Uh, near ARC. Uh, the first part is going to be about um, feminism. Basically, you know, what, how do you interact with feminists or what Islam, what's Islam's perspective on feminism? And the second part will be on the LGBT. Explosions, I understand. Okay, okay. I think Salah is in like two minutes. We'll get ready for it.